Welcome to Pixel Composer 1.18.5 This version actually doesn't have a lot of big features like in the previous one It's just a bunch of improvement or like performance and stability But there's still some little feature that I want to address So let's get to it Right, so there's some performance improvement Especially when you were working with a bigger project You should see quite a big jump in performance, I hope And another big thing is the new file size compression uh, if you try to open your previous project and then resave it, you're gonna see the file size uh, reduce up to like 100 times. Uh, the file size in all the previous version is just filled with junk and repeated data, and now it should be a lot better. There are also a little bit of visual change on some on the node as well. You might see that the junction here getting a little bit smaller, and it is now aligned to the default grid. Another change on the timeline is when you drag the timeline, you can hold control to go outside the animation range, both positive and negative. Uh, be careful about the negative frames, especially when you have node like cache, because it could break when you try to access the cache frame in the negative position. Then we have a number of new nodes. We have the sample gradient, which will convert a gradient into a palette by sampling a uniform point in the gradient. So you can have a gradient input, then you change the step number and you see you're gonna get output as a palette or color array. Then we have the OKLCH OK color creation. So allow you to create color using the, the lightness or chroma, the hue. Then we have the addition of the related part in the part input. So when you have a part input box like this, you can just type the dot slash to indicate related position. In this case, it will be part relative to your project file save position. Then we have the improvement on the smoke simulation. In the emitter, you're gonna see that there's now a default shape type, which make it easier for you to create simple emitter. You don't have to go and select surface anymore. You can just check, you can just select the disk shape and then you can adjust the scale, adjust the position as you want. There are also now more options for applying force directly from the emitter itself. Like you can add the repulsive force from the emitters. We can make it more interesting by adding like adding number of spokes so you're gonna see that it come out from four direction you can also add twisting force in the domain curator there's now an option to add boundary like it be a wall or making it wrap in the previous version if you want a wall you have to add in the wall shapes in the collision part right now you can just add in wall and it's just gonna add wall to your domain automatically. And then we have an option to change the time step, which will affect how the simulation is calculated. So you can set it to be a higher time step, which, which will result in a faster animation, but it could also be less accurate. You can also make it smaller, which will make the animation slower. But this is generally not like speed up or slow down, because if you notice the output here, the change in time step also change in the simulation accuracy as well so your result can be vastly different and then we have an improvement on an amateur system so when you create your amateur you're gonna see that the amateur related node do now render the amateur or the bone shapes on the graph make it easier for you to see on both creation and posing as well now back on the creation there's a now mirror tool which allow you to mirror bones and its children so we can have a bone like this and I'm gonna use mirror bone but I click on it and it's gonna show me the mirror axis right if I want to use other bone as the axis I can drag to other bone I'm not releasing my mouse yet right I just drag it to another bone and it's just gonna use the angle of those bone as an axis in this case we can use the default axis and then you release you're gonna see that it's gonna create duplicate of those bone and then flip it around the axis. There are also a uh, UI improvement on the pose as well. There are extra gizmo pop up when you try to when you're hovering the bone, right? Normally you rotate it. You can also scale it without changing the rotation. And I'm gonna add inward kinematic here. You're gonna think that the inward kinematic also work a little bit more smoothly than before. Another change is on the amateur pose is that the post values can now be applied backwards and it will make it easier for you to create bone constraint like in the example we have two IK controller right and I want to both of them to move at the same time so what I can do here we have these two IK handle I can click and drag the IK handle out and then connect the output back to another IK 
Now, when I try to change the IK, you will see that it will move both of them at the same time. Now, when you're hovering on the bone, it will also highlight it on the inspector. We have this bone and this bone. All right, so this bone drag it out. It will drag out as a vector 4, as a position XY, rotation and scale. So we've got kind of add a math node. And then multiply it, multiply it with 1, 1, negative 1, 1. What it does here is you basically just flip the angle, right? From 1 to negative 1. And then we're gonna connect it back to this bone. Now when we do this, we're gonna lose control of this bone. Because this bone is connected to the multiply node. Right, you can only select the bone that connects to the vector foil, not other node. But what it means is that when you try to rotate it, you're gonna see that the other bone are now being rotated in the opposite direction. Then we have an improvement on the number node. This one is just for display. We have a new display theme for slider or a flat slider instead of the, the, the blobby slider. We can have flat slider, we can have the flat rotator. There are also new increment mode, which will basically have two buttons for adding and decreasing. And we have the number of bug fix in this version. Again, scrolling on the screen right now. Now for most users, that's gonna be where it's all in. For Patreon user, I also now introduced, well, I introduced it a long time ago, to be fair, because Patreon user have access to the nightly build but we are now using a new Patreon authentication method. You can see here, when you try to authenticate your Patreon, there's a legacy way, the same email system, which are really inconsistent. So I introduced a new connect to Patreon system, which should just be easier now. It's gonna ask you to log in on Patreon or your browser. You get the code there and then you copy it back. No email, no nothing. It should work, I think. That will be it for today's video. So. Thank you everyone for watching. Special thanks to all the Patreon supporters. Again, Patreon supporters have access to the nightly build. So if you really interested in the development of Pixel Composer, you can uh, become a Patreon. You're gonna get nightly build that update almost every day. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.